Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Magnetically Aligned Woman event. Walk into your power through self-love, self-worth, and authenticity. Today, I have a very special guest. Her name is Monica, and Monica helps men and women align with nature and heal from within so that they can stop dieting, resolve digestive issues, and cultivate purpose. She has been in practice since 2005 and is the founder of Hamsa Ayurveda and Yoga, where she creates private healing retreats for her clients. Welcome, Monica. Thank you so much for being here. Hi. <laughs> and before we hop into our interview, I'd love to know a little bit more about you and your background. How did you get into um, what you're doing right now? Hmm. Well, um, like many practitioners and healers, it was mostly through my own, you know, healing journey that kind of, you know, inspired, inspired the path. Um, I always was into spiritual studying since I was a child. Um, but then when I was in my early twenties, uh, I started to have some experiences with what I was told was depression. Um, so I saw, I saw a psychiatrist and, um, you know, she told me that I was, I was depressed, but I, I didn't really feel depressed. I felt more boredom actually. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, um, yeah, so then I walked out of her office with a prescription for, uh, about four different medications, Prozac, Ritalin for ADD some kind of a sleep medication, and then some kind of a medication for anxiety. And I was looking at those prescriptions. I was 22 going, yeah, no, this doesn't, this doesn't seem like the right way to go. Um, so that inspired me to look at alternatives and I found Kundalini yoga and I found um, a shamanic healer in Chicago and I started to work with them and um, committed myself to yoga and really found out that the depression was actually more, I just not really feeling a sense of strong purpose in my life. Um, and then and then I found a lot of purpose in those practices and the healing the healing world and it just kept growing from there that is very interesting now yeah. oftentimes we get this all the time um yeah. i always say that like sometimes the mental affects your physical health was that mm -hmm. something you were experiencing where like mentally you mentally emotionally you weren't fulfilled in life and did that manifest into something physically like a physical illness yeah, definitely. Those things are very connected. Every thought, you know, we, we think has a chemical reaction in the body. A fearful, stressed out thought's going to have a very different chemical cascade in the body than a happy or peaceful one. Um, and there are certainly very strong connections between mind and emotion and digestion. And I definitely experienced that as well. Uh, so there were physical, I had some digestive issues going on. Um, also some blood sugar issues that were going on. Um, just feeling intense fatigue. And then that led to skin irritation. So then that inspired me to look at things like fasting um, methods, doing different detox programs. And that eventually actually brought me to Ayurveda. So it was, it was a whole, it was a holistic sort of journey, definitely that informs my work today and working with other people. Did this, also. I, I love that so much. Like, did this inspire you? Did this start in 2005 or you had been experimenting it for a while and then you started in 2005? It was before then. So it was probably um, 2000, <laughs> it was probably around 2002 that I started to, to do my own healing work. Mm -hmm. um, and then 2005, I had started to, to acquire, you know, certifications and things like that. So very interesting. Mm -hmm. For now, I want to sh share a little bit about your perspective on what it means to be aligned in general, because you do have yeah. men and women align with nature um, so they can heal themselves. So like, what does alignment mean for you? Alignment, um, it means having a strong clarity of what you want, you know, and, um, and a, a sense of clarity around what your gifts are you know, so what your talents are, your gifts, and what your desires are, and then having your thoughts and your actions being, be in alignment with those, those desires and those gifts. Uh, and so, you know, misalignment is when there's, when those 
arrows are pointing different directions. So when your thoughts are uh, directed one way while your desires are going another. So for example, I, you may say that you want to have a successful business, but then all of your thoughts are on your lack and the impossibilities and the obstacles. And so then there's an incongruence between your, your desires and what you're thinking about on a regular basis. And then when that happens, you'll see the manifestation of that in your life through what you're actually, the results that you're producing. Yeah. So um, it takes a little bit of work to bring those things into alignment, self-inquiry, meditation practices and things like that. Mm -hmm. I love that you shared that um, because it is, it is definitely the cornerstone of why sometimes like we have set goals and then why is it that no matter what we try, it's like if we don't get the results that we want. Um, and that was me for a very, very long time. <laughs> I was like, I'm going to take over the world. I'm going to be a millionaire. I'm going to do all these things. And then every strategy that I tried, like um, it started cascading down like my relationships, my quality of life. I started getting depressed because I wasn't seeing the results. And I was just like, I don't understand. I'm, I'm investing in myself. I'm doing all the, I'm doing all the strategies, right? Um, and realizing my mindset, um, the emotions that I feel uh, about myself, it was not aligned with my bigger vision because I had a big vision, but I deep down inside, I didn't believe that I can get there. And mm -hmm. it was only when I started working out last year that it kind of like sparked like the wheel of movement forward a little bit for me because mm -hmm. I realized like through, I gained confidence and I was like, I believe I can do this. And, and that self-belief, that confidence, that little bit, every little baby step kind of spurred forward and made the wheel move forward. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that's very important because a lot of people are stuck in this little cycle of, I'm just gonna do the strategies and it's gonna work because this person um, had these results and they did the strategies. Um, yeah. Well, in your work and what you do now, um, because you tie all of this together and of course, with dieting and digestive issues, there's like prescription medication and um, certain like workout programs. Can you share as to like how we can get to the root of the problem and not have to rely on those things to get the results that we want? Yeah, um, I appreciate so much of what you just shared. I, I think, first of all, that you just gave such a great example of, you know, that we have to feel cap capable. You know, so if you, if you don't, if you're not just, you know, you can't just follow a strategy. If you don't feel capable of what you're desiring to achieve, it's going to express itself somehow. You know, if it's in your interactions with people or your energy or your demeanor, um, which all those things are important if you're, you know, trying to build a business or, you know, cultivate to practice. And so the trick with that is, you know, becoming aware of you know, what are those unconscious beliefs and unconscious unco thoughts uh, to help you to see you know, where you are either attracting those situations in or creating them. Um, and so some specific practices that you can do just by taking some time to look at what is actually currently being reflected back to you in your life now. Um, so for example, what are your personal, the quality of your personal relationships like? What is your financial reality like? You know, are there patterns there? Do you, do you attract towards, you know, certain types of people that may be demeaning to you? Um, do you continuously mishandle your finances? Uh, you know, to look at, to look at patterns in your external life, because those will reflect back to you, your inner beliefs. If and also in your behaviors too. So our behaviors are expressions of the inner beliefs that we have. Um, so for example, if you're mindlessly eating or you're constantly snacking, uh, those are signs of unconscious beliefs that you have. And then if you have like a weight problem, for example, uh, that can be an expression of emotional suppression or kind of trying to numb out uh, to how you feel or you may believe that you're not capable of being healthy. 
You know, you may believe that you're not capable of sticking to a diet. So if you don't believe that you're capable of that, how are you going to actually be able to facilitate uh, that consistent change in behavior over a long period of time? And it even goes to how, you know, physiologically things are expressing themselves in your body. For example, if you have a skin disorder, even if it's like rosacea or acne, but you're constantly on a regular basis focusing on the acne or the rosacea and how terrible it is and how long it's been going on and you're never going to get away out of this, then you're, you're contributing physiologically. You're telling your entire body to, to create acne, you know, to create rosacea. Uh, and so the mind part of it is hugely imp important, but it isn't just all mind either, you know, because if you create um, a habit in your physical body and how you're reacting physiologically, then there are, there are reactions. So for example, you could start to have, um, leaky gut syndrome, dietary allergies, where, you know, you eat dairy and you have a skin flare or you eat dairy and you have a gut reaction. Uh, and so there are physiological interventions too. It's not just all mind and emotion, at least in my practice. And so that's where different detoxification therapies may come in, or we may do different intestinal healing um, practices like fasting and using herbal antibiotics, using plant-based amino acids that heal the gut lining. And, but the mind and the emotions part is really hugely important. It's, it's hugely important. Um, if you're constantly, it's difficult, you know, to, it's an, an additional hurdle you know, if you can't focus on your healing and focus on the possibility of what potentially could come into your life. Yeah. Wow. I'm taking a moment to just take this information in um, because it's not, the physiological does play an important role. Um, but from what you said, it's like, if you don't believe that you can heal, that creates additional stress on your body um and it, it prevents because like from what i've learned like how stress works it sends these hormones through your body and it prevents you from actually uh for example like digestion like you start gaining weight through that so when a lot of people are saying like i'm i'm exercising i'm eating right i'm doing all these things and it's not working it's because somewhere in their subconscious like you said is they don't believe they can actually achieve that goal. They don't believe they can actually lose the weight or become healthier. Mm -hmm. When, for someone who is going through that, right? Like you have your strategies to help them figure out um, the physiological aspects uh, of their body and the detoxes they can do. Um, how do you approach the, the mental and the emotional? Yeah. So the first, the first step is just to become conscious of the fact that who we are is mostly self-created, you know, and that, and that, and that you can influence who you are by your thoughts. So a lot of us become overly engrossed in our thoughts. We think that we are our thoughts uh, and, and that, you know, and that our identity is something that is unchangeable and static and a deep core aspect of who we are. Um, and so in yoga, there's a very different understanding of the ego, you know, which is our personality, our individual identity, that it serves as a function. You know, we can't be in this reality without a strong sense of I am, you know, this is my identity, you know, but it's, it's viewed as a vehicle, as a tool of the soul. You know, so it's, it's a resource for us to actualize ourselves with, but it's also changeable, you know, so we can influence it, manufacture it. Studies have been coming out about how 95% of the thoughts that we think on a daily basis, we thought the day before. So our, our thoughts are on this repeat cycle. You know, they just repeat. It's, it's almost like a computer. Uh, and so if you're not aware of that, you're just on the receiving side of you know, this inner narration, this inner dialogue that may not be serving you. And so everything, you know, that you have in your external life is the byproducts of the thoughts that you've been thinking. 
the beliefs that you have about yourself and your reality. And so if you're not aware of how this is, you know, that it's on this repeat cycle and that you can, in, you can uh, interfere with that, you know, you can change it by changing your inner dialogue. And as you change your inner dialogue, you're going to change the results that you see in your life. So the first step is really just an understanding that, you know, oh, wow, I have influence over my mind and my thoughts. And that by changing my, my mind and my thoughts, I'm going to change the results in my life. I'm going to change the relationships I'm attracted to. You know, I'm going to heal the unconscious thoughts that I have that are magnetizing these certain personalities that are not serving me. So that's really the first step. Um, there are other exercises and practices that you can do to help with pulling, um, you know, shadow type shadow, very hidden, buried, unconscious thought patterns from the psyche out. Um, and we, we do some of those exercises in this practices, but awareness is really the first, the first step. I love that. Awareness yeah. is key. Awareness is everything. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. When, um, when we talk about like changing subconscious thoughts, right? Like in your practice, do you notice like where these thoughts have developed? Like, is there a pattern that you see um, with, with people in general? Like why these thoughts or why these beliefs um, originate in the first place? Yeah, well, uh, a lot of it is childhood. You know, our childhood experiences. Uh, Gabor Mate, you know, he talks about uh, how children are very narcissistic just by, just by nature, not because they're bad or anything like that, but children, you know, tend to believe that they are the center of the, the world. And so in, in that, in that thinking, when something goes wrong, children also tend to believe that things that go wrong are their fault. You know, that's why, you know, children who are, are molested or abused tend to internalize and think that the things that happen in their life are their fault. Their parents are fighting. It's their fault. They got abused. It's their fault. And so those are big traumas, but then there are also smaller traumas where we don't, we're not as equipped as children to understand the overall context of the thing that happened. And so it becomes a very deeply impressed trauma in the psyche where, you know, we create a belief of our own unworthiness. Uh, and then, you know, as we get, grow older, then we have more situations, life experiences that confirm that those, those beliefs uh, that are not, not totally, un, totally conscious. Uh, but then you can also have adult experiences too. If you go through a divorce or you have a, a, a traumatic relationship, or if you have a boss, who, you know, you really look up to, but is demeaning you, all those things can damage your sense of self-worth, uh, and impact you in a way that you're not, you're not conscious of. Um, and so even just to say that, oh, I, you know, I have worthiness issues, you know, or I have thoughts or beliefs about my own sense of worth may, may spark a bit of shame in somebody who, you know, likes to see themselves as really strong and confident, you know, it takes vulnerability and humility to also look at those areas within ourselves. Uh, but in doing so, then you can really bring them forth to, to, heal, to heal them. Yeah. So it's childhood stuff, but then also adults that creates those unconscious beliefs. I definitely want to add to that because I think it's very important. Sometimes like when you are, when we go through life, we don't recognize these things like we don't recognize these patterns because they've been ingrained in us since childhood for so long and so it does become a subconscious belief um mm -hmm. for me it was very much the ego and this belief like you know like i i have this inner desire to make a change and i um and do all these amazing things and have my life planned out a certain way but then when it really came down to it and i realized like I have a lot of worthiness issues, like the, my people pleasing tendencies, how much I get stressed out about um, like overthinking and anxiety and looking good in front of people. And all these things had to do with my own childhood, how I was always complimented for doing things for other people. 
like oh. uh, working for my parents, for example. Oh my God, you're such a good daughter. You help and work out at the store. My self worth was tied to that, like I'm doing stuff, and so oh. I am worthy. And then when I reached adulthood, and it was time for me to venture off onto my own, and then I was like so attached to the fact that I want to work for my parents because I'm getting recognition. Then they they had this like huge disappointment about you should go to Ivy League school, you should be doing this, you should be earning six figures in a corporation, and because you didn't achieve blank blank and blank, I was like I'm not good enough, and that played in my mind for a very long time. I'm not good enough because I didn't attend Ivy League. I'm not good enough because I'm not at the weight. I'm not good enough because of all these things that I didn't check the boxes off of. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's very important to be able to recognize that, like, oh my God, these thoughts that I have, it's conditioned because of either positive reinforcement or trauma or whatever that may be in different circumstances. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think um, you brought up a really good point about, you know, touching about the feeling, you know, the feeling of not good enough, you know, and, and the feeling of, um, of uh, getting acknowledged and praised for when you do something. So then you started to believe that, oh, my, my sense of worth is based more on my, my behavior, you know, versus who I am in a deep core level. And um, those emotional signatures, is what I like to call them. So, you know, when you're a child, you're a child, you, you were, the experience that you had with your parents impressed a, an emotional signature where your worth was based on your performance. And so that, you know, the unconscious beliefs that we have are often tied to feeling states, you know, feeling states. Um, and so as adults or as we continue to grow, then we get attracted to situations that mirror and create that feeling state. And so that that is actually a strong clue as to what the unconscious beliefs and patterns were tying into your earlier question you know what are some of the ways that we can uncover and find some of those unconscious beliefs uh, if you look at um you know perhaps you're in a demeaning relationship or a relationship where it's not treating you in a way that you should you should be treated uh to look at how is that making you feel you know how do you actually feel in that um, okay, you know, I feel unheard. I don't feel listened to. I feel dismissed. Okay. When, you know, really, really tap into that feeling, that emotional state. And then when did you feel that way five years ago? Can you remember an experience or a memory where you felt that way? Um, yeah, actually it was in my previous relationship and I felt that way. Okay. How about five years before that? And it's like, oh, oh my gosh, this employer that I had made me feel that way too. And then you can trace that back to where was the original point in life that that emotional signature was written into your core. Um, and then you can start to work to do some deeper level of healing with that. Because a lot of times what we are doing in our attractions towards people and situations is trying to recreate that feeling and the, that emotional state, mm -hmm. you know, to echo what you were saying in those, those subconscious beliefs that are there, it's a repetition of a pattern oftentimes established when we were children, but a lot of it is based around a feeling state or an emotional experience as well. Um, and so we, you know, and that's when you can actually be projecting onto other people and situations as well to recreate that feeling or that emotional state. Um, yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. So that means like these, these repetitive patterns, we actually, and like we recreate them because they've just been how we feel comfortable all this time. Yeah. And so with different situations, like with the boss, with a relationship, even with like um, going for your career or 
other things like that, we tend to, would you call it like self-sabotage? Like we, we tend to self-sabotage because we're comfortable being in that particular cycle, mm -hmm. being receiving of that particular emotion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? And it can be, it could be for anything. If you're used to being overweight, you know, and, and, and having hatred towards your body, you know, that's a, that's a feeling state. So even though you may say, uh, I want to change, I want to be different, your sense of normal, you know, your sense of, you know, patterning is to feel differently. Uh, and so part of, part of the work is, you know, is tapping into different feeling states. Um, and so there are feeling states, for example, that are associated with security and safety in life. There are feeling states that are, that are associated with being in a positive, nurturing, nourishing relationship. But it's a feeling state when there's, you know, financial security in your bank account. It's, there's a feeling state that's associated with having a healthy and agile body, you know, and so there are feeling states that are associated with the opposite of all those things too. Uh, and so if you are constantly feeling like I am in a state of lack, there's no money in my bank account, then um, you're going to be more likely drawn to situations and things like that, that recreate that reality in your, in your life. Um, so part of creating and shifting change, again, that's with anything physical, mental, emotional is tapping into those different emotional states that are associated with different experiences. So for example, even if somebody has a skin disorder, um, you know, I have had a client that I've been working with for a while and she first came to me and it was like dietary allergies and I did an intestinal healing cleanse with her and, you know, we've been working with each other for three months, but what has become abundantly clear without a doubt is that it has way less to do with dietary allergies as it has to do with her stress reactions, you know, her reactions to stress uh, and, and how that creates this whole cascade inside of her, which leads to her face getting really hot and these breakouts and rosacea. And it doesn't have barely anything to do with, you know, dietary allergies or her digestion. And then when we traced it back, it came down to her childhood, you know, and these experiences, that's when she first started to feel these heats, this heat in her cheeks, you know, that continue to, that continue to build, continue to grow. Um, and so with her, it's not so much, you know, dissecting, you know, that's something that perhaps you would do with a, ther a therapist, which is, you know, dissecting the core reasons why you're, you know, angry. But what the work that we are doing is we are building the muscles to cultivate feeling states that are opposite to that, you know, so what would be the opposite to being angry, you know, and frustrated, compassion, um, self-love, you know, tolerance, you know, so, so then the meditations and, and practices, some of which we're doing together, most of what she's doing on her own are, are cultivating those emotional, those emotional feelings of compassion. Um, and so you, sometimes you have to just take the focus off of the, the feeling states that you don't want to feel anymore. You know, it's, it's not so much about dissecting them and understanding their core origins as much as it is building the muscles of the other feeling states and emotions that you could be feeling. So that when the trigger event happens, you know, the reaction isn't necessarily to be angry, but is to feel compassion instead. Wow. Thank you mm -hmm. for sharing that. Mm -hmm. um, oftentimes, like we do get stuck in the whole, I need to heal everything, but you're saying it's not, um, that's not the case. You can definitely heal without having to completely understand where or why it's happening. Um, just having a basic awareness, like, yes, this is happening, but how can I shift from outside of that and create and start to create um, through the practices to, to have the result or alleviate the symptoms. That's right. Because a lot of it is just where you're putting your attention mm -hmm. and your focus, you know, so where, wherever we put our attention or our focus, that's, what's going to grow in, in our life. 
Uh, and so, you know, if it's, oh, I have an anger reaction, I have an anger, you know, let's talk about the anger. Where did the anger come from? Where was the first time you felt the anger? As, as, a, as, a, as a brush stroke, that's all important stuff to know. And, you know, and you may need to dive deeply, more deeply into that, you know, for you. But to move forward, you know, it's focusing on, and that's what the, you know, one of the primary differences between being a coach, which is, you know, essentially what I am and a, a practitioner versus being a, um, a therapist, you know, or a psychiatrist is that, you know, we're focusing more on, on going forward, you know, versus, you know, doing the uncovering the work of going in the past as much. Yeah. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. So for the listeners who are out there wondering, should I go to therapy or should I go to a coach? moving forward and actually creating the life that you desire with guidance with practices that is coaching yeah um, now as we're wrapping up today i know that um you shared so much information can you condense it into three three easy to follow things that people can touch back on um, to start healing themselves to becoming more aligned yeah, so I would I think, you know, the first thing is to really understand that your thoughts, uh, which are the your inner narration, are incredibly powerful in creating your life. Uh, but to understand that they are tools for you and not who you are. And so you can be a conscious creator by shifting and changing your inner narrative. So that would be the first thing. It's just the awareness of that fact. And the second thing I think is to tapping into, you know, to do future self meditations or future self practices, uh, which is to get very clear about who you see yourself in, in the future as your idealized self. Uh, and so you can take some time just in the morning, um, ideally, to think about that, to visualize who you are in the future as your fully expressed healthy self. What would you look like? Where would you be living? What would you be doing? How would you feel? Most importantly, how would you feel in your idealized relationships? How would you feel in your idealized career? How would you feel, you know, and, and to really focus in on those feelings uh, because that's going to build the muscle of you being to align up and actually be and express uh, those 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 characteristics and those realities that you want in your life. And then the third practice is to understand and know you know what some of your unconscious beliefs might be. And you can do that by looking at the current state of your life and what is being reflected back to you. Uh, what are your current relationships like, your financial reality, your behaviors, et cetera, and start to look for patterns and see if these are patterns that have been um, infiltrating other relationships that you've had in your life previously. And those are going to really be the threads that are gonna take you to the root of some of the issues that need to be shifted and healed. Thank you for that insight. Um, and I know you have something special for the audience to, um, who are watching today. Would you share that with us as well? Sure. Yeah, I have a, um, a workshop called Know Yourself Workshop, which is rooted in Ayurveda, where it's about it's a very comprehensive workshop. And I think one of the most comprehensive doshic constitution workshops that are out there where you can learn what your body type is from an Ayurvedic perspective is what your digestion is your digestive tendency and how to enhance and strengthen your digestion. There's also a really great exercise in there for exploring your shadow and for helping you to become aware of what your unconscious tendencies are. And there's also a practice in there that you can do to help to cultivate clarity around what your gifts and purpose are. And that is totally free. And you can sign up by the link that, are you going to give them the link? Yeah, the link that you'll be giving them. Thank you, Monica, and everybody who's watching. As you know, I always attach the link below the video so you have access. And um, Monica, if you can just share with us before we end um, your website and then like a basic description of what you help individuals do again so that they have a way to connect with you. Yeah, so um, I have a few different programs right now, um, coaching programs where I help men and women who you know tend to be very ambitious but struggle with self-care um, to really commit and do the self-care practices that will keep them healthy and prevent disease. 
And then I also have an intestinal healing workshop that I do. And I also offer one-on-one -on -one emotional healing sessions too. So you can read all about that on my website, just monicayearwood.com. I also have an Ayurvedic center in Chicago too, where we do detox programs there. But all of that information you can just find out about on my site, monicayearwood.com. Amazing. Thank you so much, Monica, for being here with us today, sharing your wisdom and these insights. Um, and for everybody else who is watching, I cannot wait to see you guys in the next episode. Bye, everyone. Thank you so much, Nikki. Yeah. Thank you. Bye.